All right, good morning and welcome to Grand Round. Our speaker today is Dr. Razavi. Dr. Razavi received her medical degree at the Tehran University of Medical Sciences in Iran. She completed her internal medicine residency at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center and her endocrine fellowship at Ohio State University. She also pursued a research fellowship in endocrinology at the University of Tennessee. Dr. Razavi has written multiple book chapters and journal articles on diabetic ketoacidosis. She's also the recipient of the Trainee Travel Award for Medical Research in 2010 by the American Federation for Medical Research. She is currently faculty here in the Division of Endocrinology at University Hospital's Cleveland Medical Center. Today, she will be speaking about thyroid disease in pregnancy. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Azadi. Hi. Um, good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Today's topic is management of thyroid disease in pregnancy based on the American Thyroid Association guidelines published in um, February 2017. As we know, um, thyroid gland increases in size during the pregnancy by 10% uh, in iron um, sufficient area and up to 40% in iron deficient area. All the thyroid hormone production, including T4, T3, and TBG, will increase during the pregnancy up to 50% of non-pregnant ranges, and it will remain high until delivery. And uh, um, this is like summarized the thyroid hormone production changes during the pregnancy um, with um, nadir of TSH around um, 10 to 16 weeks, and also um, increase a HCG during the pregnancy, which I'll explain uh, later more. Um, we consider pregnancy as a stress test for thyroid. It can cause hypothyroidism in women with limited thyroid pressure <coughs> or in iron deficiency area, and also it can cause postpartum thyroiditis, thyroiditis in women with underlying Hashimoto's disease um, that are used thyroid prior to pregnancy. There are multiple uh, changes in thyroid function tests and interpretations during the pregnancy comparing to non-pregnant women. As we know, HCG shares a, a structural homology with TSH and has a very weak thyroid stimulating activity. During the pregnancy with increasing TSH and increasing production of thyroid um, hormone and negative feedback on TSH production, we expect a lower TSH level during the pregnancy. Um, Guidelines recommend lower normal limit for pregnant women should be decreased by 0.4 from non-pregnant uh, women range and also upper limit of normal should be decreased by 0.5. Uh, this is a new change in the ATA 2017 guidelines. Previously, the upper limit of normal uh, was uh, calculated by decreasing one unit from the uh, upper limit of non-pregnant ranges. However, multiple uh, population-based studies in U.S., China, all around the world show that TSH, normal TSH during pregnancy is not as low as we thought. If healthy women can have TSH of 3.5, 3.8, and without any complication. Therefore, um, ATA recommends that each center should have a population-based trimester-specific ranges for TSH. Um, if this is not available, then um, the upper limit of normal during the pregnancy should be considered four, which is a change from 2011 guideline, which upper limit of normal was 2.5. So this TSH can be normal during pregnancy, especially in twin pregnancy, which we have increased level of HCG. And also in African and Asian women, lower TSH can be just a part of normal variant during the pregnancy. This is a summary of new studies that was included by WHO uh, for calculating the upper limit of normal for TSH. These studies are unique in case that they also include the iodine status in their population size. All of these studies have a population base more than 500, and also uh, it dif differentiates the population based on their e BMI and also ethnicity. As we see, you can see that TSH of 3.5 considered upper limit of normal in healthy pregnant women with uh, negative uh, thyroid antibodies or even TSH of 3.37. So all these studies um, made uh, changes in the new guideline recommendation for TSH ranges in pregnancy. 
There are also some other um, uh, differences in um, thyroid function tests um, during the pregnancy. Uh, three T4 commercial assays are not very accurate during pregnancy because of the changes in pregnant women's serum, including increased TBG or low albumin, and also increased uh, non esterified fatty acids. Um, this always disrupted commercial uh, 3T4 immunoassays. The gold um, standards for 3T4 during pregnancy is equilibrium dialysis or uh, liquid chromatography. However, these uh, are not accessible everywhere and they are very expensive. So, um, new recommendation is just go by total T4 measurement and also uh, calculating the free T4 index. In the calculation, we always need to make sure we uh, added a 50% increase on TBG uh, for pregnant women. And the focus during pregnancy for all the lab interpretation is that we should have a population-based, center-based uh, trimester-specific ranges for our pregnant women, which should be calculated in healthy pregnant women with negative, anti, um, negative thyroid antibodies. However, if this is not available, the ATA recommendation is normal ranges for first trimester is 0.1 for TSH up to 4, and also second trimester 0.2, 0.3 up to 4. There is another uh, popular area in uh, pregnancy uh, which has been a topic of multiple studies recently and is the um, autoantibodies in pregnant women. Up to 17% of pregnant women can have a positive uh, TPO or thyroglobulin antibody and they are also U-thyroid. About 20% of these women can develop elevated TSH by third trimester. Uh, 33 to 50% of women uh, with positive TPO antibodies can develop uh, postpartum thyroiditis after delivery. Because of all these uh, complications, there have been multiple studies to evaluate maternal outcome of patients, uthyroid patients with positive antibodies. A study by Santagaro and Green uh, showed a twofold increase in the risk of pregnancy loss in women with positive antibody and uthyroid function, so uh, thy normal thyroid function test. Multiple uh, recent meta-analysis also uh, um, showed a similar increase in pregnancy loss in these women. And some um, suggestive or proposed mechanism for this uh, pregnancy loss can be cross-reactivity of antithyroid antibodies with ACG receptor in zona placida versus increased fetal autoimmunity or increased endometrial cytokines in these women. This is a summary of um, multiple recent studies in positive um, and thyroid antibodies and adverse maternal outcome. Not all of them are supportive, but uh, most of these studies show that um, positive antibody can cause pregnancy loss. Um, some didn't show the association. Some also showed preterm delivery. Um, therefore, based on these recent studies, American Thyroid Association recommends a low-dose thyroid hormone treatment if a patient is U-thyroid and has positive thyroid antibodies and has a history of previous pregnancy loss. There are multiple studies evaluate if selenium can be helpful in this situation or IVIG. We don't have sufficient data to recommend this at this time. But if a patient does not have a pregnancy loss history, there is no recommendation for treatment with uh, level thyroxine. Another controversial um, topic in pregnancy is management and definition of hypothyroidism during pregnancy. Uh, just because the definition of TSH has been changed multiple times, uh, the definition of hypothyroidism has been changed too. Over hypothyroidism considered if a TSH is more than 10, regardless of free T4 um, values, or if the free T4 is low and TSH is more than the upper limit of trimester specific population based ranges. If that is not available, if the TSH is more than 4, 3T4 more low, consider over hypothyroidism. Subclinical hypothyroidism considered as if a pregnant woman present with a normal 3T4 um, and TSH between 2.5 and 4. Uh, we have another term which we will discuss more uh, here called isolated hypothyroidemia, which is low free T4 between 2.5 to 5 percentile of normal frequency ranges. 
why these are very important? Just because there are multiple studies that show untreated hypothyroidism can be associated with a maternal and fetal adverse outcome, including pregnancy loss, premature uh, birth, uh, SGA, low IQ, or even uh, gestational um, hypertension disorders um, in over hypothyroidism. In subclinical hypothyroidism, the recent data is not as clear about the fatal or maternal outcome. There are multiple studies show that untreated subclinical hypothyroidism can be associated with pregnancy loss or um, peritone delivery and also uh, neurocognitive changes in the um, children of these women. But there are also studies that did not show the same association. There are multiple studies that is done on um, isolated hypothyroxinemia or low free T4 in um, pregnant women and also um, adverse effects for mother and uh, baby, including preterm delivery, which had a um, positive association, and also uh, delayed language, uh, language development and IQ um, in hypothyroxinemia. But um, there are multiple new studies, including one of them in UK called CAS, Continued Antenatal Thyroid Screening. In this study, um, actually they compared uh, women with uh, um, hypothyroxinemia. Um, in, they divided women with hypothyroxinemia in two groups, uh, treatment with levothyroxine and to, without treatment, and they monitored the children up to three years. And IQ tests in treated group and non-treated group were the same at age of three. Based on this uh, recommendation, ATA does not recommend treatment of isolated hypothyroxinemia because it does not change the neurocognitive outcome. Um, this is another a new study which was published last week in New England. Um, and it, um, Actually, in this study, about 97,000 of pregnant women were screened for thyroid antibodies and also um, thyroid function tests. About 600 of these women had positive um, thyroid antibodies and also subclinical hypothyroidism. They were divided by a RCT design to treatment group and non-treated group. The children of these women were followed for five years and um, there were no changes in IQ at age five between treated group and non-treated group. Um, based on all of these um, findings, so far the recommendation is if a patient has a um, TSH of more than 2.5 and pregnant, we should check thyroid uh, antibodies TPO for all of them. If TPO is positive and TSH is more than pregnancy specific range or more than four, this is a strong recommendation to, do, uh, to consider treatment. If T PO antibodies are negative and TSH is more than 10, it's still a strong recommendation for treatment. However, for TSH between 2.5 and 4, with positive antibody, we can still consider treatment. But uh, for negative thyroid, um, thyroid uh, antibody, um, we only treat if TSH is more than 4 to 10. Um, this is a, another summary of all we just talked, um, that TSH more than 10 consider over hypothyroidism, we should definitely treat all of pregnant women. If TSH is between 2.5, more than 2.5, we consider checking TPO antibodies. If TPO antibody is positive, we will consider treatment, especially if TSH is between 4 to 10, um, and there is also a moderate recommendation to treat if TSH even is more than 2.5 with positive antibody. For negative um, TPO antibody, we only treat if they are between 4 and 10. This is just to remind us that thyroid is essential for development and growth and metamorphosis for everybody. Uh, that um, first couple doesn't have any thyroid, is growing and he's two years old, but has not changed to the frog yet. Um, for treatment of hypothyroidism, if we decide to treat any of our subclinical hypothyroidism or overt hypothyroidism, we need to know that the pregnancy can increase the requirement for um, thyroid hormones. So this thyroid function test needs to be checked frequently, and the dose 
the adjustment needs to be done frequently. If a patient has overt hypothyroidism before pregnancy, we need to know about 85% of this patient requires increased dose of levothyroxine during pregnancy. Therefore, with the first positive pregnancy, patient needs to inform us and we need to increase the dose by 30%, which is about adding two tablets per week in addition to the previously seven tablets weekly. Um, the treatment goal for uh, TSH during the pregnancy is um, we try to keep the TSH the lower half of trimester specific range or less than 2.5. Um, and if um, we decide to not treat some of our TPO positive antibody or some of our subclinical um, hypothyroidism, they still require free T4 uh, and TSH checks every four weeks up to uh, 20 weeks and also one time around uh, labor around 30 weeks. There are some patients who are thyroid, but they are more at risk to develop hypothyroidism, including positive antibody patients, hemithyroidectomy, or history of radioactive iodine. They should also monitor every four to six weeks in the first half of pregnancy. And there are multiple studies that show if we follow this uh, algorithm and um, patients will be uthyroid, TSH will be at all during their pregnancy, there won't be any adverse outcome in pregnancy and they are similar um, to uh, uthyroid patients. And after delivery, we can start the pre-delivery dose uh, for most of the hypothyroid patients. And we can start, if we start the thyroid hormone just for positive antibody during the pregnancy, we can stop uh, the thyroid medicine at the time of delivery. Only for Hashimoto thyroiditis because of increased risk of relapse in postpartum, we can continue the increased dose of levothyroxine up to six weeks and check another thyroid function test. Another area for, um, for our discussion today is uh, management of thyrotoxicosis during pregnancy. The most common uh, causes of thyrotoxicosis or hyperthyroidism during pregnancy is transient gestational uh, hyperthyroidism. It's about 3% of all pregnancy, um, and it is, um, it is associated with other conditions including hyperemesis gravidarum, multiple gestation, mole or choriocarcinoma. The mechanism can be TSH receptor mutation, which causes hypersensitivity to HCG. Um, in this condition is self-limited. Treatment is usually symptomatic relief, and uh, it will be resolved around uh, 18 weeks of gestation. Another etiology for thyrotoxicosis is Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune condition up to 1% of pregnancies. The less common causes of thyrotoxicosis can be toxic um, autonoma versus subacute thyroiditis. If we um, check the TSH, and TSH is suppressed um, and low comparing to the um, Pregnancy specific range, we should also check free T4, thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, and uh, total T3. If patient has a nodule or greater on exam, ultrasound can be done. And then for treatment, as I said, the most common cause is gestational hyperthyroidism. It's self limited, it does not require any anti thyroid drugs, ATDs. However, for great disease, um, the 2017 guidelines foc mainly focus on preconception counseling, and they uh, recommend that each pregnant, each woman at the childbearing age should be aware of the risk of ATDs and uh, should have an option for permanent treatment before starting pregnancy plans. If a patient is newly pregnant and um, has been on uh, anti um, ATDs medication for uh, more than six months, the thyroid antibodies are negative and they're on a very low dose of metimazole or PTU, we can consider this pregnant woman as in remission. So the new recommendation is that we can stop all the thyroid medicine, uh, all the anti-thyroid drugs, ATDs, for the first trimester, continue checking the thyroid level every two to four weeks. As long as they are in remission, we don't need any uh, treatment for their grave disease. However, if uh, they we require treatment, we should start PTU in the first 
trimester and um, consider switching to metimazole after that. However, the recent guideline does not uh, recommend really to switch him back to metimazole because this can uh, change the dose and also make the patient's hyperthyroid again. Um, previously, we thought that metimazole is only associated with embryopathy, but there are multiple studies that show PTO can also cause some minor defects. So, um, so during the pregnancy, we definitely need to monitor liver tests because there are some um, liver failure associated with PTU and pregnant women. Um, because of all these side effects, the recommendation for um, thyroid, thyroid toxicosis management during pregnancy is that we should find the lowest possible dose that uh, will keep the thyroid hormone in the upper limit of normal in pregnancy. We don't need normal free T4 for a pregnant woman. Um, and the dose needs to be decreased for sure in second and third trimester. If a patient has positive, positive uh, level of thyroid, thyrotropin receptor antibodies or TRAP, the medication should be continued till delivery. The combination of ATDs and levothyroxine, which is a blood replaced therapy for adults, is not recommended during pregnancy. Sometimes we end up having surgery in the second trimester if a patient is hyperthyroid just because they may be allergic to this medication or they require large doses of ATDs or history of non-compliance. If a patient is um, selected for surgery, we need to make sure we have the trap antibodies level just to see if the baby needs uh, further follow-up afterwards. As we discussed, uh, a slide, um, uh, discussed before, um, great disease can be associated with uh, increased uh, risk for fetus and baby. It can cause hypothyroid, fetal hypothyroidism with large doses of ATDs or uh, fetal hyperthyroidism if we have high level of trap antibodies and also central hypothyroidism. And therefore, with any patient who is hyperthyroid during pregnancy or have a history of radioactive iodine and ablation or surgery for uh, grave disease treatment and also have a history of um, previous infant with hyperthyroidism, we should check the thyrotropin receptor antibody <coughs> around uh, week 18 to 22. And if these thyrotropin antibodies are more than the three um, times of normal ranges, we should refer those patients to high-risk clinic and also uh, um, significant follow-up after the delivery for their babies. Another concept um, for thyroid toxicosis during the prepartum is postpartum thyroiditis, which is in about 8% of pregnant women. We can see them up to 50% of you thyroid women who have positive thyroid antibodies. Um, it can be because of the rebound of immune system after uh, delivery, and uh, it is associated with increased level of pro-inflammatory cytokine, IgGs, and thyroid antibodies. Uh, usually present with a hyperthyroid phase, um, about one-fourth of patients can present with hyperthyroid first phase, um, another fourth can, be present, can present with hypothyroid phase, or uh, can be present at the euthyroid phase. Um, for hyperthyroid phase is usually treatment is symptomatic, maybe beta blocker. We monitor the thyroid function test every four to six weeks uh, while they are symptomatic. And when they are euthyroid, we will continue checking the TFT every two months up to a year. If patient develops hypothyroidism, which is usually um, which usually uh, takes about three to um, one year to uh, resolve. We usually monitor this patient on, uh, if they are not symptomatic, and we consider treatment if they are symptomatic or if the TSH is elevated more than six months. Um, we consider winning uh, the, of the treatment uh, when, um, after about six to 12 months of continuing the treatment, we consider winning. Winning is having the dose of levothyroxine and checking the TSH every six to eight weeks. However, if these patients are pregnant, breastfeeding, or planning for pregnancy, we should not do weaning, and we should continue the thyroid hormone for the next pregnancy and consider weaning one year after that. 
After a successful winning, we still need to do a TFC every year in this moment in, um, as they are high risk for developing hypothyroidism. Another um, area that we are concerned during pregnancy is uh, management of thyroid nodules. Prevalence of thyroid nodules during pregnancy is about up to 20%, they, um, and it increases with parity. Um, thyroid nodules will grow during the pregnancy. In a Belgian study, they grew up to 60%, but almost all of them will return to the pre-pregnancy size at uh, about three months postpartum. <coughs> Prevalence of thyroid cancer in pregnant women have been reported differently in different data registry. Um, one of the California data registry reported 14 out of 100,000 pregnant women can develop thyroid cancer. So what do we do? If we have a thyroid nodule on exam or patient has a strong family history of thyroid cancer or complaints of dysphagia, dysphonia, we will check the thyroid function test. Uh, we will consider doing an ultrasound. And we will consider doing FNA based on the new guidelines, which is a com which the criteria has changed. It's a combination of five criteria plus ultrasound um, features. They recommend definitely doing um, FNA for high risk features uh, during the pregnancy, which include microcalcification, irregular border, nodules that are taller than white, and also extra thyroidal invasion. So if we did FNA and the nodule is benign, there is no more workup during the pregnancy. If uh, we did the FNA, the result is intermediate, which means ATPO versus um, suspicious for pregnancy, they can still be followed after the delivery. Um, and also, the new data does not recommend any levothyroxine suppression therapy to decrease the size of nodules during pregnancy. If we had an FNA and the results come back, differentiated thyroid cancer. And if there is no lymph node in the ultrasound, no malignant lymph node, we can still monitor them just with ultrasound, no surgery during pregnancy. And if there is any growth, um, growth then they can, we can do the surgery around second trimester. If it is DTC, differentiated thyroid cancer with positive um, lymph node, then we can do the surgery during the pregnancy in second trimester. And the TSH goal is the same as non-pregnant women, which will be the lower limit of normal, less than 0 0.1. And there's also another consideration. If a patient has history of thyroid cancer and they become pregnant, if they are structurally and biochemically disease-free, pregnancy does not increase any risk of recurrence in these uh, women. So they really don't need to have an ultrasound during pregnancy or even thyroglobulin monitoring. However, if the patient is not disease-free, pregnancy can consider a stimulus for growth. So this patient requires ultrasound and thyroglobulin level check every trimester, and this also includes the microcarcinoma. This is a new change in the recent guideline comparing the previous guidelines. This is just a summary of our discussion for thyroid nodule management. Two more slides. I'm very fast. <laughs> okay. Um, one other um, topic is iodine supplementation during pregnancy and lactation. There are multiple different recommendations by WHO, American Thyroid Association. WHO recommends um, 250 microgram daily iodine intake. HEA recommends dietary iodine intake plus 150 supplementation. Um, we like for iodine sufficient women to have a urinary iodine level of 150 to 250. We should always consider that excess iodine is also not safe during pregnancy. There are um, ATA recommends not more than 500 micrograms iodine. Um, WHO and Institute of Medicine recommend not more than 1,100. Another controversial topic is universal screening during pregnancy. There are not sufficient data to recommend it or um, against, uh, against it. However, any women who is planning for assisted reproductive techniques, they should have a TSH screening. And also, if a woman had a previous history of thyroid problem or positive antibodies, 
or uh, other autoimmune disease, age more than 30, BMI more than 40, and also high-risk medication, and in the area of moderate to severe iron deficiency, we still recommend TSH screening for all these women. Thank you for your attention.